Welcome to lesson on autonomous differential equations. Consider differential equations of the form dx dt equals f of x, where the derivative of solutions depends only on x, the dependent variable. Such equations are called autonomous equations. If we think of t as time, the naming comes from the fact that the equation is independent of time. Of course, we can also express autonomous differential equations in the form dy dx equals f of y. And now to turn to the cooling coffee problem using Newton's law of cooling, which states dx dt equals k times the quantity a minus x. Rex is the temperature of the coffee, t is time, k is some positive constant, and a is the ambient or room temperature. The graph on the right shows an example of the slope field, as well as the graphs of several solutions when k is equal to 0 0.3 and a equals five. Analyzing the graph, notice Regardless of what the temperature of the coffee starts at along the x-axis, as the time increases, the temperature of the coffee approaches five. Also notice we have a constant solution, x equals five, indicating if the coffee temperature starts at five, it will remain at five, which is the room or ambient temperature. So again, note the solution x equals a, which in our case is x equals five, which is the red horizontal line, we call these constant solutions the equilibrium solutions. The points on the x-axis where f of x is equal to zero are called the critical points. Recall that f of x is equal to dx dt, the derivative function value. This indicates the point at x equals five is a critical point. In fact, each critical point corresponds to an equilibrium solution. Note also by looking at the graph that the solution x equals five is stable and that small changes in x do not lead to substantial different solutions as t grows. If we change the initial condition a little bit, then as t approaches infinity, x of t approaches five. So again, looking at the graph, if we start along the x-axis with an x value a little more than five or less than five, as t approaches infinity, x of t approaches five, which is why the critical point is considered stable. In this simple example, it turns out that all solutions, in fact, go to five as t approaches infinity. If a critical point is not stable, we say it is unstable. We'll talk more about that shortly. And now let's consider the logistic equation, dx dt equals kx times the quantity m minus x for some positive k and m. This equation is commonly used to model a population if we know the limiting population m, that is the maximum sustainable population. The logistic equation leads to less catastrophic predictions on world population than x prime equals kx. In the real world, there is no such thing as a negative x population, but we will consider negatives for the purpose of the math. As an example, let's consider x prime equals 0.1x times the quantity five minus x, the slope field, as well as several solutions are graphed below. Analyzing the graph, notice we have two critical points at x equals zero, as well as x equals five, which again is where we have the graphs of the horizontal lines or the constant solutions. The critical point at x equals five is stable because if we start with x values a little more than five or less than five, notice as t approaches infinity, x of t still approaches five. However, the critical point at x equals zero is unstable. If we start with an x value a little more than zero, x of t approaches five, not zero, and if we start with an x value less than zero, x of t decreases to that bound. It is not necessary to find the exact solutions to talk about the long-term behavior of the solutions. From the slope field, we can see the limit as t approaches infinity of x of t is equal to five if x of zero is greater than zero. So if we start with any x value greater than zero, as t approaches infinity, x of t will approach five. The limit is equal to zero if x of zero equals zero, indicated by the graph of the horizontal line x equals zero, and the limit doesn't exist or is equal to negative infinity if x of zero is less than zero, indicating, indicating if we start with an x value less than zero, as t approaches infinity, x of t decreases to that bound. If we are interested only in the long-term behavior of the solution, we will be doing unnecessary work if we solved the equation exactly. We could draw the slope field but it's easier to look at the phase diagram or phase portrait, which is a simple way to visualize the behavior of autonomous equations. The phase diagram or phase portrait is the graph shown here in the middle. 
Let's first compare this to the slope field. We first indicate the critical points at x equals five and x equals zero. And if we start with an x value more than five, as t approaches infinity, x of t decreases and approaches five, which is why we have a down arrow here. If we start with an x value between zero and five, as t approaches infinity, x of t increases and approaches five, which is why we have an up arrow here. And if we start with an x value less than zero, x of t decreases and approaches negative infinity, which is why we have a down arrow here. In practice though, we normally don't start with a slope field and then make the phase diagram. We skip the slope field and go straight to the phase diagram. And we can do this by plugging in some x between the critical points. f of x will have the same sign at all x between the two critical points, as long as f of x is continuous. So if we draw the vertical axis and then plot x equals five and x equals zero, we want to select x values in each subinterval meaning one value greater than five, one value between zero and five, and one value less than zero. For example, we could select x equals six, one, and negative one, and then we determine f of six, f of one, and f of negative one by subbing the x value into the right side of the differential equation. Recall the right side is f of x. In this case, f of six is equal to negative 0.6, which is less than zero, which indicates when x is greater than five, x of t is decreasing, and therefore we have a downward arrow. f of one is positive, which means if x is between zero and five, x of t is increasing, which we indicate with an upward arrow. And then f of negative one is negative or less than zero, which indicates when x is less than zero, x of t is decreasing. With the phase diagram, it is easy to sketch these solutions approximately. As time t moves from left to right, the graph of a solution goes up if the arrow is up, and it goes down if the arrow is down. Once we have the phase diagram, we classify the critical points as stable or unstable. If a critical point is stable, the arrow above and below will both point toward the critical point, otherwise the critical point is unstable. Here we have three examples of unstable critical points. In our example, the critical point five is stable, because the arrow above and below both point toward the critical point at x equals five. The critical point at x equals zero is unstable because the arrows above and below don't point toward the critical point at x equals zero. Unstable points with one of the arrows pointing toward the critical point are sometimes called semi-stable. So looking at these three unstable critical points, because this one arrow is pointing toward the critical point, this critical point could be considered semi-stable, as well as the third critical point, because the arrow above is pointing toward the critical point. I hope you found this helpful.